my name's Liz, I'm the baker that sews. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you are a subscriber. As always, it's really lovely to have you here as I share my sewing journey. I love talking about fabrics and patterns and sharing things that I've made. So if that, if that is something that you are interested in, please do make sure that you hit that subscribe button. So today's video is going to be me sharing all of the things that I got sewn up in the month of March. Now March was a bit of a mixed bag, I think I say that with all of my makes videos. Um, my sewing tends to go, and I'm probably not the only person that's like this, but I tend to get like a, a burst of creativity where I'm really inspired and I want to make lots of different things. So I'll sew quite a few things and then I then have, I guess to compensate for being so busy and sewing lots of things, a couple of weeks where I've got no motivation, I'm not really interested, I don't want to sit on my sewing machine. Um, and I've learnt to just roll with that. So I found March was a little bit like that. I had bursts of wanting to make something and then a few quiet moments and then getting back on it and wanting to make things. I am wearing one of the things that I got made up in the month of March, so I will talk about that in a second. But I just wanted to um, talk about the new introduction that I've got to my video. Um, you will have noticed that it's different to my usual videos if you are a subscriber that's watched all of my previous videos. Um, I accidentally deleted the introduction and the intro and the outro that I used to use, which was um, a very short video which spanned fabric and books and lots of different sewing related things. I accidentally deleted that. That was quite old. I filmed that when I first started my YouTube channel, which was about a year ago now, which is amazing to think that I've been doing this for a year. So um, because I deleted it, it was an opportunity to film a new one and I've only filmed like a very short um, intro and outro, but it is me filming my newly organised wardrobe. So I spent some time last week organising my wardrobe by colour. Prior to that, it was a bit higgledy-piggledy um, and I didn't really organise it in any particular way, but um, I really wanted to organise it by colour and I am in the middle of filming a very long vlog where I talk about my wardrobe and I share all of my garments in a bit more detail and I also talk in that video about organisation and how I choose my outfits for the week. So um, do make sure you hit that subscribe button because that video will be coming out soon and that's going to be a long one because I've had feedback as well from lots of people, lots of you lovely guys saying that you do like a long video. Um, so that is going to be very long. I filmed it in chunks, a bit like I did with my Q&A and then I'm going to put them all together. So um, I hope you like the new intro and outro. I do need to tweak it a little bit but for now I think it'll be okay. So, um, on to today's video. I'm going to talk about all of the things that I sewed up in March. I'm just going to get my trusty notebook. So, I will talk about what I'm wearing first, because that's one of the, well, it's actually one of the last things that I sewed up in March, but it is on my list. Um, and this was taking part, and I've actually filmed a separate video about this dress, which I'll link in the description down below if you want to go and check it out. So, the dress that I'm wearing is actually the last thing that I made in the month of March. Um, but I made it as part of the hashtag Frugal Frocks 2021 challenge. And that was a challenge that was running for the month of March. And the idea was that you dug out some fabric from your stash and you used a free sewing pattern to make up a dress. Um, it was hosted by Ruan, who is the Yorkshire Sew Girl, and Sam, who is Frugalissima. I'll link their YouTube channels and Instagram channels down below so you can go and check them both out because they're both really inspirational sewists too. Um, so I did a video where I was sharing lots of different fabrics and also talking about some free patterns that I had and I ended up going for this pattern which was a pattern that came as part of a, a free sewing magazine and it is the Liberty dress. It comes in sizes UK 6 to 20. I've discovered that they've got an Etsy store so if you didn't get the magazine and you don't have this pattern but you do like the look of it you can go and buy it as a PDF. Again, I'll link anything that I talk about in the description below. But if I do mention something and you go to the description to find it and it's not there, please just leave a comment because sometimes I do forget um, what I've mentioned in this video, even when I'm editing the video. Sometimes I'll forget to put something in. So please let me know in the, in the comments if there's something that I mentioned and I haven't linked it because I will go back and find the link to it. So um, it is a really simple, um, quite straightforward princess bodice gathered skirt dress um, and I'm really pleased. It's not a dress pattern that I would normally have gone for. I tend to go for um, quite floaty, quite loose fitting dresses because I just feel like they're a lot more comfortable on my body and I feel a lot more relaxed wearing that style of dress. 
but this is quite fitted on the bodice, um, quite narrow sleeves. It's got an invisible zip going down the centre back and then it's got a gathered skirt. There isn't an option with this pattern to put pockets in, but it would be really easy to add either inseam pockets or patch pockets on the front. I didn't go for that because I don't think I had enough fabric. Um, so I did start telling you the sizes, sorry. Um, so it comes in sizes UK 6, which is a bust measurement 32 inches, waist measurement 25 inches and hip measurement 35 inches. And then up to a UK 20, which is a bust 45 inches, waist 38 inches and hip 48 inches. So the fabric recommendations for the Liberty dress, they recommend lightweight cotton, um, cotton lawn, linen, rayon or crepe. Now this is just a cotton poplin which I got from Like So Amazing, and I know Sarah's still got some of this left, so I will link it in the description box for you below. Um, I really love working with cotton. It presses beautifully, it behaves really nicely too, and when you're inserting something like an invisible zip, it makes it really straightforward um, because the fabric is so stable, it doesn't really shift about too much. Um, so yeah, and also it's quite breathable using cotton. So in the summer when the weather's a bit warmer, this is still going to feel really nice to wear. I shouldn't feel too hot wearing this in the summer. Um, I'll show you, there's two different skirt lengths and two different sleeve lengths. So you can do the short sleeves or you can do the longer sleeves. And then you've got the two different skirt lengths too. So a longer skirt or you've got one that stops at the knee. Now I originally wanted to do the longer skirt and then when I tried it on, I just didn't feel like it was the length that suited me for the shape of the dress. So I ended up cutting off about four inches and then I made a matching headscarf, um, which I'm really pleased about actually. Um, it's quite nice to be able to wear something like that. I haven't tied it in a bow, so it's quite long at the moment, but I would normally tie it in a bow. Um, really simple dress to put together. Um, are there line drawings? Let me see. It's quite good to show you the line drawings so you can see the construction. So yeah, it's got the princess seams on the front bodice and then the different sleeve lengths. And then it's just got a really straightforward gathered skirt. I'll stand up and show you what it looks like on me, but I will put pictures in as well so you can see what it looks like. So the dress sewed up really nicely. The instructions actually are quite detailed for a free pattern. I was really impressed with them. And there's colour photographs which help with some of the fiddly bits. And I found that quite useful to have. Um, you've got the cutting layouts and then some information about the pattern, pattern markings. There's a glossary about stitching terms, which is always helpful. And then there's a section at the bottom which tells you about the pattern pieces that you need for the different variations. And then it goes through the process of sewing up the dress and it's broken it down into stages, which I really like because it means if you've only got a short amount of time and you just want to tackle one or two things when you're making a garment, you can just do that very easily by looking. So, you know, say you've only got half an hour, you could stitch the bodice and then insert the sleeves and then stop. And you won't, you're not going to get yourself muddled on where you're up to. And then it goes on to the next page, stitching the skirt, inserting the zip and then finishing. And then it also includes the finished garment measurements, which I really like because um, if it's fitted on top, I want to know that I have got a little bit of ease around my bust. Um, so it's always really helpful to have the finished garment measurements so that I can go and refer to that. Um, and that just helps me decide what size that I'm going to make. I did go off my bust measurement and I made a size 10, um, which is to fit a 34 inch bust, which is exactly my bust size and my waist size actually, it's just my hip size would have put me in a six. Um, I'll stand up so you can see what it looks like. Um, so yeah, I've got the short sleeves and then the skirt starts sort of here. So it's just above, my natural waist is here and the skirt just starts just here and it's just a lovely, simple gathered skirt all the way around. I'll stand up, I've got it on with tights today because it's chilly. So there's my knees and it stops just on my knees, which is lovely. And then we've got an invisible zip going down the centre back, um, which was really straightforward to insert. And then it's also finished with facing along the neckline. I'll just pull it up so you can see. So it's just finished with a facing. So I was really pleased. Um, I got this sewn up literally on the day of reveal day. So reveal day for Frugal Frocks was the 31st of March and I was still inserting my zip. I don't know why I left it so late because I had it cut out a few weeks before 
it just took me a while to get going with it really um yeah but i managed to get it finished for reveal day which i was really pleased about and i've got a really lovely summer dress now and i'm definitely going to use that pattern again and um, because i really like the fit of the dress on me i think it's actually a really nice shape for me so really pleased so that was the first thing, although it was the last thing that I got sewn up. I'm going to get change into the next pattern that I sewed up because I ended up sewing up three versions of this pattern. So I'm just going to get changed. Okay, I am back and I am changed into the next make. So like I said, I've made three versions of this. And the pattern is the Leo Dungarees by By Hand London. So it's a relatively new pattern that's been released. And actually, they've just released an add-on pack where you can change it to a dungaree dress, um, which looks amazing. Um, I'm probably not gonna get the add-on pack if I'm honest, because I think I would only ever make the dungarees in this pattern, but I'll link all of that information in the description so you can go and check it out. Really loose fitting dungaree pattern, as you can see. There's a front bib and a back bib, and then it's got this gorgeous like um, drapiness to it and billowy um, trousers, which when I stand up, you'll be able to see what that looks like. It comes in sizes UK 6 to 34, which is a US 2 to 30. Um, I'm just going to find the the sizing chart for you. Um, but they describe the Leo dungarees as quite possibly the most ludicrously comfortable pair of dungarees you'll ever wear. The Leo dungarees feature a deep crotch and gloriously loose legs that are elasticated at the ankles and gently pleated at the waist. It's got a simple bib front and back and then it's got shoulder tie detail. I'll go into a bit more detail in a second about that. It is a fairly quick sew and they are absolutely gorgeous to wear and super comfortable. Um, these are the line drawings. So as you can see, they're really quite straightforward. On their blog, there's a hack to add pockets. For all of my versions, I haven't added pockets. Um, so for the sizes, so um, a US 2, which is a UK 6, your high bust measurement would be a 30 inch bust. Um, your bust is 32 inch, waist 25 inch, hips 35 inch. And then it also gives you the finished garment measurements, which I absolutely love with patterns. And then for a US 30, which is a UK 34, high bust is 64 inch, um, your bust measurement 66 inch, waist 59 inches and hips 69 inches. So it's really inclusive pattern, which is brilliant. Recommended fabrics, um, natural fibres and floaty drapey weaves are the key to your comfiest pair of Leos. We love viscose chalice, viscose twill, viscose cotton linen blends, soft enzyme washed linen, double gauze, chambray and flannel. So a really lovely variety of fabrics. In terms of how much you need, it takes up a lot of fabric. Having said that, I have managed to get them out of two and a half metres. Um, it does recommend between three and four and a half meters of fabric, dependent on how wide your fabric is and dependent on what size you're making. Um, this pair, I think I used three meters. There's another pair I used three meters. And then there's the third pair, I used the Sohilly Jane fabric, which is two and a half meters. So it dependent on how wide your fabric is as to whether you can um, get it out of less or not. And also it depends on how long you want your trousers to be. I absolutely loved sewing these up. They've got this really beautiful scoop detail down the side, which is finished with bias binding, and I just use binding for the same fabric. The bib at the front is lined, and the bib at the back is lined too, and then it's got this tie feature on the shoulder, which is just really lovely, and that means that you can have your bib up really high, or you can have it fairly low if you want to. Um, I've worn mine with um, long sleeve jumpers at the moment because it's been quite chilly, but I know the model is wearing here um, short sleeved, which equally looks lovely. I've tried it on with a, tom a top and a jumper that's got billowy sleeves um, and sort of not as fitted and I don't feel like it, it works as well as a fitted top. That's my personal preference. When I've tried it on with different jumpers and things, I've found that a plain top, because my mine are all made in, in busy fabrics, but a fitted top um, just looks nicer than um, a top that's maybe got like poofy sleeves or is um, sort of not as fitted, I suppose. But that's my personal preference and that's just how I found styling it. Um, it comes together really nicely. So let me stand up and show you what it looks like on. Um, so I've got the bib here 
and then you've got the bib at the back. You've got tight details there and there. Um, and then a really lovely feature with the bib and the trouser piece is you can either do these gorgeous little pleats. Let me see if I can pull it up to show you. These beautiful pleats. So you pleat the trouser into the bib or there's an option to gather it. Now with all of my versions, I've pleated because I just love that look. And what that does is it creates this gorgeous sort of drape of the fabric and you get these lovely sort of almost like gathers um, and it just gives a really beautiful shape. And then the side is um, finished off with bias binding. I don't know if that's gonna be easy to show you. You just finish it off with bias binding and it's got this gorgeous like scoop detail on both the sides. And then the ankle is finished with some elastic which again helps create this lovely billowy, drapey, like really comfortable look to the dungarees. Um, so yeah, it's just finished. I've still got tights on from when I had the lemon dress on. It's just finished with elastic there. So it gathers that really voluminous trouser piece into some elastic. And again, that just makes them really comfortable. It's got a really low crotch. That's the other thing to say. But again, that just makes them really comfortable. There's loads of room around here for the front and the back. So I probably, next time I make them, could do with sizing down for the trousers. They are really baggy and really roomy. I think that's really comfortable. But if I wanted to, I could size down next time. I'd probably keep the same bib size because I like the coverage of that bib. I made, just looking at measurements, I made a UK 10, which goes off my bust measurement, which is 34 inches. And I wanted to go off my bust measurement to make sure that I got enough coverage with the bib on the front and the back. There's no sort of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? There's no gaping with the bib, which is something that I was a little bit worried about. Because I do find on pinafore dresses, sometimes I get a bit of gaping in the middle. Um, but yeah, there's no gaping at all. Um, absolutely love this pattern. I loved it so much. I've now made three pairs. Um, super comfortable. I've worn it to work and really comfortable to wear at work too. Um, when it's been a chillier day, I've just put tights on underneath and that's kept me nice and warm. But in the spring, when the weather starts to warm up a little bit, I think these are going to be a really great transitional piece. You get the cutting layout detail, which is always helpful. Um, construction was really straightforward. The instructions are always really helpful too. Um, it doesn't tell you how much elastic you need for the ankle piece, so um, I had to play around with that a little bit. But then once I got the measurement right, I've made a note of it for myself, um, so that I don't have to just keep measuring myself each time. So overall, a really lovely pattern from By Hand London. Really easy to fit, really straightforward to sew up, really comfortable, and actually just a really nice dungaree pattern. It's great that it comes in a huge size range, um, it's great that you can use lots of different fabrics for it too. Um, so big thumbs up from me. Um, I will get changed into the second pair so you can see what they look like. So I'll be back in a second. Okay, I have got my second pair of Leo dungarees on. I'll stand up in a minute so you can see what they look like. And um, before I do that, just to say this is a viscose twill. So it's slightly weightier than just a regular viscose. It's got um, a slight sort of... Um, texture to it I guess I don't know if you're going to be able to see that let me hold it up a little bit more so it's got a slight texture to it I don't know if you can see that at all but um the fabric that I used for this one was a viscose twill so it is slightly weightier the second version which I'm wearing now I used a fabric that I got from a so Haley Jane box and I know that I only had two and a half meters of this and I still managed to get a pair of Leo dungarees out of that making the size 10. The only difference I made with this pair was I took off two inches off the bottom because I just felt with my first pair, they were very billowy um, and they didn't touch the floor, but I felt like there was a bit of a danger of that happening. Um, so I had to make sure that my bib was tied quite high up. Um, and that's just because of my height, I'm five foot five. So I took off two inches from the length of this and they still sit on my ankle, which is what I wanted. I still get that lovely billowy look um, and, you know, they're still really comfortable and really roomy. So I'll stand up so you can see what they look like and then I'll talk about the fabric that I used. Um, so again, I did the pleating on the bib, which gives this gorgeous drape. 
um, got lots and lots of room in them. I used the same fabric to do the bias binding on the sides. Um, I've got the tie detail at the top. Um, yeah, I just took off a little bit of length off the bottom. So still finished with elastic. You still get that, ooh, you still get that billowy shape on your legs. Um, there's just a little less fabric hanging at the bottom because I took two inches off. Super comfortable. Really love how roomy they are at the front and the back. Really, really comfortable, which is great. I love anything that's got a bit of room around here. Makes for a very comfortable wear. And I've just paired it with the with a Freya top that I made a few months ago. Um, just in this lovely cotton jersey that I got. I know oh, this is a viscose jersey actually that I got from Simi Sunshine in this lovely green shade of green which I love. The fan brick has got um, directional print which I think is fine for the Leo dungarees. It's got these really beautiful mint flowers and then purple leaves and then it's on a navy background. So I've worn this with a navy jumper underneath. I've also worn it with a this jumper underneath green one. I've also worn it with I've got bright pink um, Freya top that I made. Um, and this fabric actually is quite versatile because of all the different colours that it's got in there. I want to make a lilac Freya top actually. I think that will go with quite a lot of things that I've got in my wardrobe too. Um, I did the tie detail as um, the first one. So the only difference I made with this one is I took two inches off the length. Um, so again, really pleased with this version of the Leo dungarees. So I've got my third pair to pop on for you. So I'll be back in a second. So here is my third pair of Leo dungarees made in a viscose fabric that I got from Rainbow Fabrics. So it's this gorgeous leopard print. It's got a grey background and then darker grey leopard print splodges with black around them. I absolutely love it. It was an absolute dream to sew with. The only change I've made to this pair is I took two inches off the length again, like the last pair, and I just feel like the length is slightly better on me. Um, still got the tie detail. I know Joy from Pink Coat Club has just released a blog post over on Like So Amazing where she's hacked this pattern to include um, dungaree buckles. So instead of having the tie detail, she's just got some dungaree buckles in there. So I'll link that blog post down below so you can go and check out how she did that because she also, I think she took out some of the volume from the trouser piece too. Um, and she made a beautiful black pair of Leo dungarees. Um, this one, again, I gathered into the, um, so I did the pleats, sorry, I didn't gather. So with this one, I did the pleats, you can't see. With this version, I've done the pleats again into the bib um, for the front and the back. Um, again, I used the same fabric for the bias finish on this scoop and this scoop. And then we've got the elastic at the bottom. So super comfortable. There's the elastic, which creates this lovely volume. Really comfortable again to wear. Um, just really straightforward, actually. The bib, again, on all of the versions is fully lined. So you've got, um, when you cut out the bib, you cut out four pieces and then you um, sandwich the straps into the bib and then you attach the bib once you've constructed the trouser pieces um, and then you insert the elastic. And before you attach the trousers to the bib, you attach some bias binding to this scoop here. So really enjoyable. I really enjoy inserting bias binding. I find it quite a nice way to finish your garments and I find it quite a relaxing technique to use with sewing too. Um, they guide you all the way through, as usual with By Hand London, the pattern instructions are really detailed um, and then you've got images along the way to help and support you. So there's an image just to show you about how to insert the bias binding for when you are constructing your trouser piece. Um, again, you've got um, instructions, quite a lot of instructions next to a lot of the steps. Um, which show you really clearly um, what you need to do for each of the steps. Um, it's laid out really nicely and then you've also got some paper at the back um, so that if you want to make any notes on modifications that you made or um, notes on like the fabric that you used um, and what date you made them etc then you can do. That's always a nice touch. Um, and then on the last page, love what you made, show us by tagging by Hand London and then there's a couple of hashtags um, for the Leos. I can see myself making more of these. I want to make some in plain fabric so that I can wear it with some of my 
um, brighter jumpers that I've got in my wardrobe and some of my brighter t-shirts because I think that would look really nice. Um, and out of the three fabrics, so I've used this two viscoses and one viscose twill. I would love to make a linen pair. I think I'd like to make a linen pair for the summer. I think they would be really comfortable. Um, so I'm on the lookout now for some plain linen and some plain viscose so that I can have a go at making some plain versions of the Leo dungarees. Um, but great pattern, absolutely love it. Really straightforward to sew up and super comfortable to wear. Really easy to fit as well because it's meant to be quite loose fitting. Um, the only bit, so I, what did I do? Oh, I held up the paper pattern piece for the bib just to see about the coverage along here to see what size I wanted to make because um, I didn't want the bib to be super narrow. Um, but I think once you've got that and then also the straps, I quite like long straps um, so you can tie them into a bow and still have some of this um, length on the tie straps. Um, so yeah, but the, the strap piece is quite long actually with the pattern pieces. Um, so overall, really pleased with it. Really straightforward, enjoyable sew, really comfortable. And there are loads of beautiful versions over on Instagram. So do go and check out the hashtag by Hand London or BHL Leo um, to go and get some inspiration. Um, so I'm going to get changed now into my next two makes because they go together. So I'll be back in a second. Okay, I'm back and I'm wearing two things that I made. So I made a two piece, which is why I've got both of them on at the moment. And if you watched my um, sew along for the cocoa jacket and the Clio skirt, then you will have already seen this outfit. Um, I'll stand up in a second so you can see what it looks like. But I used two patterns to create a two piece outfit that I can wear. I have no idea where I'm gonna wear this to at the moment, but it really made me smile making it. And I've absolutely loved wearing it just swishing around the house so i used the sew over it cocoa jacket and i'll go into more detail about that in a second and then i also used the made by ray cleo skirt which is this beautiful gathered skirt with a flat front waistband and then elastic in the back of the waistband i will stand up and show you the whole outfit first i'll pop an image in of what i look like too and then i'll go into more detail about both of the patterns but I absolutely love this. It's definitely my favourite thing that I've made this month. Um, it just was a really fun thing to make and it's just really made me smile. Um, I bought some of this gorgeous jacquard fabric from Sew Me Sunshine and I got a remnant piece, which was about, I think I must have got about two and a half metres, if not three metres, because I managed to make the Clio and a really gathered, not Clio, I managed to make the cocoa jacket and a really gathered Clio skirt out of it too. So this is the jacket, it's fully lined. I've just got some black lining on the inside. Um, and then this is what the jacket looks like at the back. It's a fairly cropped jacket and you'll see that when I stand up. So it's quite cropped. Uh, here's my waist, here are my hips. And then this is where the jacket stops. So it's not a jacket that's meant to cover your bum. Then this is the Clio, which has got the flat fronted waistband there. And then it's got elastic in the back, so it's all gathered. And then I doubled the width of the skirt because I knew that I wanted a really poofy skirt. And I also wanted to use all of this fabric. And um, I'll stand up so you can see the skirt length. I've got it on with the same tights because um, it's just been easier not to take them off. Uh, so there's my knees, so it's just below my knee. The skirt is exactly what I wanted. I wanted loads of volume. I wanted it to be a really fun party skirt. And then at the back, there's loads of volume too. It's really, really swishy, which is exactly what I wanted. Um, and then the jacket just goes really nicely with it. And I think because the jacket's quite fitted, it sort of tames some of that volume that you've got in the skirt. So I'll talk about the jacket first, and then I'll go on to talk about the skirt. So it's a pattern by Sew Over It. I've had it in my stash for a while and I've wanted to sew it up for ages. I've wanted just a really smart jacket. More so for, I'm just gonna move my chair so I'm a bit closer. I've really wanted a smart jacket, mainly for work, if I'm honest, on the days when I'm not teaching. Um, but I'm not sure if I would actually wear this to work. I think this is more like a party jacket and you know, going out, nice night out, which hopefully will start be, be a, which hopefully we'll be able to start doing soon. Um, the downside of this pattern is it's not a very it's not got a very large size range. So it starts at a UK eight, which is a bust measurement 33 inches, waist measurement 26 inches, and hip measurement 36 inches. 
and then it goes up to a UK 20 which is a 45 inch bust 38 inch waist and a 48 inch hip in terms of fabric recommendations they suggest medium to heavyweight fabrics like a tweed a boot clay viscose linen melton jacquard and boiled wool so I use this jacquard fabric it's not sort of heavyweight at all it is I would say for a jacquard it's quite a lightweight jacquard and then they suggest that you might want to use the selvages of the fabric to add fringing so you can put fringing down the front here I didn't want to do that so I didn't do that um, or you can use a frayed bias frayed bias strip of your fabric um, although that won't work for melt and wool um, you also need lining fabric something that is lighter than the main fabric like an acetate polyester or viscose and then half a meter of lightweight tailoring interfacing so I just used the cotton fabric that I had um, and yeah it works really nicely actually for the lining it's really really lovely smart jacket um, and exactly what I had imagined here are the line drawings so you can see it's got princess seams on the front um, the sleeves go to your wrist um, it is completely lined all the way through the jacket so the sleeves are fully lined too as well as the inside of the jacket all fully lined now I would say I'm used to finishing coats and jackets with a facing this one you don't I'll show you the pictures inside the instruction booklet but you don't use a facing which I was a bit concerned about and you can see actually on the sleeve um, I had to really press the lining and I've understitched it as mu much as I can to try and stop that from happening but the lining does peep through on the sleeves it doesn't peep through on the jacket um, but it does peep through on the sleeves and I've actually made a second version of the cocoa jacket using a wool that I got from Sony Sunshine and I have found with the lining that it peeps through slightly more because I used the Coupro which is a slightly drapier fabric for this jacket I used a cotton so it presses really nicely and it sort of behaves itself the Coupro is slightly bouncier and I've just found that it's peeped through a bit more um, so if I did make this pattern again, I think I would draft some facings um, and that just prevents the lining from peeping through. It gives a really neat finish on the inside. So I would say that's the only downside from um, my experience of sewing this pattern up. So here are some more line drawings. This version, it's not very obvious to see, but this version has got the fringing down the centre front. Um, so... Oh, it's also got a two-piece sleeve. That's another thing to say. Um, I would also say pay careful attention. And I go into more detail when in my sew-along. But all of the pattern pieces have got notches. And it's not always obvious which pattern piece you are joining. So there's, so, there's quite a few pattern pieces um, because of the construction of the jacket. Um, so there's like a centre front panel, the side panels, and then you've got the back piece, which is cut on two pieces as well so just pay careful attention to the notches and you can see when you are attaching so this bit when you're attaching the side panel I don't know if that's going to be obvious to see but you can see there's notches and then on the outside of that pattern piece there's double notches so it's just being really careful at those steps to see which side of that side panel you need to attach um, to the pattern because it's not really obvious on the pattern piece um so you construct all of the jacket and all of the lining and then you attach it together uh once you've inserted the sleeves so with the lining the only difference i would say with the linings when you are attaching the shoulder um pieces the shoulder seam you need to create a little pleat with the excess in the center of the shoulder seam here and you don't do that with the main fabric um, and then you attach the lining and the jacket around the neckline first and then unstitch that to stop it from peeping through and that has done a really good job on this jacket actually it doesn't peep through at the top at all um, and then you attach the lining down the center front um, and then you have to attach the lining to the sleeves and there's a few fiddly bits in there um, so if you are planning to sew this jacket do go and check out my sew along because I go into a bit more detail about what you need to do with the sleeve when you're attaching the lining to the main fabric to stop it from twisting when you're pulling it through um, and then you attach it along the bottom and then what you need to do is create a hole in the sleeve of your jacket and then you pull it through and give it a really good press and then that's your jacket finished really enjoyable sew I found it quite straightforward to come together too 
in terms of how much fabric you need um version one with the fringing you just need slightly more because of the if you're going to make the the fringing on the bias cut on the bias um if your fabric is narrow so 1.15 meters you need two meters and if it's slightly wider then you need about 1.6 meters of fabric um, if you're doing version two with no fringing, then you only need 1.4 metres of fabric if your fabric is quite wide. Um, I managed to sew up the skirt and the cocoa jacket using, I think I must have had about two and a half metres. It was quite a large remnant piece. Um, yeah, I managed to sew both of them using about two and a half metres of fabric. And I'm really pleased with the end result. I think it's a really neat... Um, cute little jacket that I'm going to enjoy wearing when we can start going out again and it's really comfortable to wear too. Um, the size that I made, I went off my bust again and I didn't want it to be too tight so I made a size 10 which is a bust measurement 35 inches, waist 28 and hips 38 inches. It doesn't matter too much because it's not a jacket that's, that fastens but I just wanted to make sure that there was no gaping at the front and that it did match up like this and I'm really pleased with the finish. So let me take the jacket off and then you can see the skirt a little more. I'm just wearing a ready to wear black top underneath. Um, so yeah, that is the jacket with the jacquard fabric. It's absolutely gorgeous. I love that sparkle. And then I just went for a plain black lining because I wanted the, fa the main fabric to really shine really. Um, and then that's the sleeve. Um, and I'm really pleased. I really took my time with it. Um, and I feel like I've got a really cute, really well finished jacket. Um, and then I had enough fabric left and I knew that I wanted to make something matching to go with the jacket. So I made a skirt. So the Clio skirt is not quite as gathered as what I have made, but I wanted to use every inch of this beautiful fabric. So I did use extra um, fabric. So it is quite voluminous, but that was exactly the look that I wanted to go for. So it's got a flat fronty waistband here and then it gathers at the back because you've got elastic that you insert in the back of the waistband. Um, I love how swishy this skirt is. I love how poofy it is and it is exactly what I wanted from a skirt. I use the Clio pattern from Made by Ray. Um, it is a beginner pattern. Actually, before I go on to talk about the Clio skirt, with the Coco jacket, I would say that you need to have some experience sewing a jacket it wasn't particularly complicated um, and their instructions are really clear and they hold your hand um, but I would say you need to have some experience of sewing a garment um, just because the line, lining of the fabric can be slightly tricky especially when you're attaching the sleeve lining um, so I would say not suitable for a complete beginner but if you've sewn a few garments then you'd definitely be able to give that a go so the Clio skirt is a really simple gathered skirt which has got a flat fronted waistband and then elastic in the back so you get that gathering in the back waistband and the gathering with the skirt. There's several skirt lengths and then with the option to add a band onto one of them. So you've got this shorter version or the longer version and then you can add a band. So I went for, I think I went for this version, um, but instead of adding the band, I just added an extra bit of length to the skirt. So it stops um, just at my knee from what I was saying earlier, just below my knee. So yeah, I basically used all of the fabric that I had left over to create the skirt because I didn't want to waste any of the fabric. The skirt comes in sizes extra, extra small to extra large and then plus sizes one to three. So in terms of body measurements, um, for an extra, extra small, um, for a bust measurement, 32 and a half inches, waist measurement, 26 and a half inches, and then a hip measurement, 34 and a half inches. And then plus size three is a 51 inch bust, 45 inch waist, and a 53 inch hip. In terms of fabric recommendations, they recommend light to medium weight fabrics like a lawn, voile, double gauze, poplin, shirting, baby well corduroy, sateen, silk, quilting cotton, linen or cotton linen blends. So a huge range of fabrics. Um, you also need to make sure that you've got some interfacing for the waistband and then you also need 1.25 inch wide elastic and then matching thread um, for your fabric. I was a bit worried, I didn't line this skirt and I was a bit worried about the um, jacquard fabric being a bit scratchy but it's not scratchy at all, it's actually quite smooth. Um, so I didn't end up lining it in the end. 
I did cut out contrast. Um, so on this skirt, you can have this contrast um, band on the bottom. And I did cut that out using the same fabric that I used for the waistband. But when I pin, well, I didn't pin it. When I clipped it on the bottom, I didn't like the look of that. And I'm really pleased, actually, I left that off. Because, um, I, again, I just want this fabric to do the talking. Because I think it's such a fun fabric, which is absolutely beautiful. Um, what I did do was I used a, um, a contrast cotton fabric for the waistband and that was mainly because I was worried about the jacquard fabric being itchy across my tummy so I just went with a cotton fabric and I'm really pleased that I did that because it means that the jacquard doesn't scratch or itch across any of that space um, and I'll probably end up wearing this with tights anyway so on my legs where the jacquard um, is touching my skin it shouldn't itch because I would have tights on anyway. The Cleo skirt is a really straightforward skirt pattern it is gathered, um, it's got the flat front waistband and then elastic in the back for um, sort of the gathering again at the back, but it also makes it a really comfortable skirt to wear, um, which is something that I'm always looking for when I'm sewing anything that is slightly fitted across my waist. It has to feel comfortable. Um, I've talked about this a lot before, but I do suffer with bloating and I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't going to feel uncomfortable across that area at all. Um, there's a knee length version with pockets. I chose not to put pockets in and that was mainly because I knew the skirt was going to be really voluminous anyway and I didn't want pockets to add any more volume to that skirt at all. Um, and as I've already said, you can use a variety of different fabrics. It comes together really nicely. Um, once you've constructed those um, skirt panel pieces, it's just attaching the waistband, putting in your elastic across the, the waistband at the back. Um, and then stitching that elastic to make sure that it stays in place and creates that lovely gathering and then just giving it a really good press to make sure that your waistband is nice and flat. I'll stand up so you can see the skirt in a bit more detail um, but like I said it's exactly how I wanted it to be. I, I am so delighted with this two-piece um, outfit that I have created. Um, so yeah I've got the flat fronted waistband here loads and loads of volume in the skirt which is exactly what I wanted and then at the back we've got this elastic channel which creates even more gathering and I just think it looks so lovely with the jacket I think it goes really nicely um yeah and it is a skirt that I just think is going to be a really fun party skirt and I can't stop swishing in it let me pop the jacket back on so you can see what it looks like um yeah i'm just i'm just so pleased i'm sure you can probably tell by how much i'm going on about it i'm just really pleased with a re i've got a really fun party outfit and i just need a party now uh for me to be able to wear it it's really fun and i'm really really pleased i would highly recommend both of the patterns they were both really enjoyable to sew and I hadn't sewn with jacquard fabric before, but again, it was just a really nice fabric to work with. It behaved itself really nicely. Um, and I think because I chose a cotton to line it with, that made the process a lot easier. Um, when I made my cocoa jacket out of the wool with the um, Coupro, it was slightly fiddly. Fiddle when I made my cocoa out of the wool and the Coupro, that was slightly fiddlier um, because the wool was quite thick and the Coupro was quite drapey. Um, but I will share more of that in my April Makes video. So I am going to get changed. I've got one, two, three, four more things to show you. So I'm going to get changed into another outfit now. Okay, I have got changed into the next two things that I got sewn up. I'll stand up and show you the skirt first because it's using the same pattern that I've just talked about. Um, and then I'll talk about the blouse in a bit more detail because it's a different pattern. So the skirt is the Clio skirt, which I've just talked about with the gold jacquard fabric. Um, made by Ray Patterns, Clio skirt with a flat fronted waistband um, and then elastic in the waistband at the back. Um, so I've used a fabric that I got from a Sir Hayley Jane box, which is a viscose. And it is in this beautiful mint um, fabric and then it's got all these lovely like shapes all over it and then it's got some lemon pops of lemon um, in amongst all of the different shapes it's very drapey now I'm going to be honest and say that I'm not 100% sure about the skirt I'm just going to move my little chair out of the way um, I don't know whether it is a skirt that I'm going to get a huge amount of wear out of and I don't know whether that's because it's just the fabric or whether it's the time of year um, I need my chair back so I'm going to stand up for you 
Um, so it finishes at my knee. I didn't add an extra band on or anything. Um, it is gathered, but it just doesn't feel as gathered as I would have liked it. And I think maybe it is to do with the fabric being very drapey. Um, so the same at the back. I feel like it's a very straight skirt. I think that's what I'm umming and ahhing about. Um, I've got the flat fronty waistband here, and then it's gathered at the back with elastic. I wanted to create a faux dress. I will put a picture in of me wearing the whole outfit so you can see what the skirt and the blouse look like. Um, and it'd be great to get your thoughts on the skirt because I don't know if I'm just a bit hesitant because it is a different shape to what I'm used to. The fabric is very drapey and I would normally use this fabric for a dress perhaps. Um, it would be great for me to have more skirts in my wardrobe to go with some of my t-shirts and I think I might get more wear out of the skirt in the summer when the weather is a little bit warmer. The blouse I absolutely love and I've worn the blouse to work quite a few times already. I love the shape of it, I love the frill, I love the fit, I love the sleeve length, there's button detail on the back. So the, the blouse I absolutely love. It's just the skirt, I don't know what it is about the skirt that I'm just feeling a little bit hesitant about. Um, because I wanted to have this faux dress look. So I've tucked the blouse into the skirt. So I've got this little bit of sort of um, poofiness here. And then the same with the back. Um, I'll show you the back detail on the blouse whilst I'm stood up. It's got this gorgeous button detail down the back. Um, and then you've got this ruffle that goes all the way around the back too, as well as around the front. And it goes sort of across the shoulder too. Just love this ruffle detail. Um, I'll talk about the pattern for the blouse now, but yeah, it'd be great if you could let me know what you think about the skirt. So the blouse is a pattern that I've had for a while. I've made this pattern up once before, but I haven't worn that blouse a huge amount. And I think the reason I haven't worn the blouse that I've made originally a huge amount is because I put the ruffle, there's an option to put a ruffle on the neck, so it would go here. And then there's also an option to put the ruffle on the sleeve. Um, and the blouse that I made the first time, I did all of the ruffles and wearing it, I just feel like it's too much. So I need to get that blouse out, unpick and take that ruffle off and redo the um, collar. And then the same with the sleeves. I need to take the ruffle off the sleeves because I just don't feel comfortable in that blouse. That's a really simple fix. This one I love much better because I haven't added that ruffle here and I haven't added the ruffle on the sleeves either. So the Nina Lee Bloomsbury blouse is a Edwardian inspired blouse um, for the romantic in all of us. It features a high collar and um, it's got a yoked bodice and then there's two ruffle options. So you can go full on big ruffle or you can do a narrower ruffle. I went for a full on ruffle and I absolutely love it. Um, bracelet length sleeves, it's got a button back fasten. Um, and then you can add ruffles to the collar and the sleeves or you can choose to leave those off which is what I've chosen to do here. You can make narrow ruffles or you can opt for the full on, um, really flamboyant, um, really fun, bold, wide ruffly look which is what I went for. In terms of fabrics they recommend lightweight wovens like a cotton lawn. Um, it would also work in velvet, dupion silk or contrasting lace for the yoke sections. So I've, I've used a viscose which came in a So Haley Jane box and I'm really glad that I used this viscose. I think it really suits the pattern. The ruffle is really nice and drapey. It's not like really sticky out that I think you would get if I used like a cotton poplin. Um, in terms of sizes, it comes in sizes 6 to 20. So for a 6, it's a bust measurement 32 inches, waist measurement 24 inches and hip measurement 33 and a half inches. And then for a size 20, it's a 46 inch bust 38 inch waist and a 47 and a half inch hip. I went for um, an eight because I went off my bust measurement, which is a 34 inch bust, and it fits me really nicely. For the size eight, it does say waist measurement 26 inches. But actually, if I untuck the blouse, you'll see that there's still quite a lot of room around my waist and my hips, and there are finished garment measurements too, so that's always really helpful. And going off my finished garment measurements, um, for a size 8, there's, it's 33 inch waist, so I knew that there would be enough room around there. It was more my bust and I didn't want it to be too baggy because I knew if it didn't fit here, then this ruffle wouldn't work at all. And I didn't want it to feel too tight, but I feel like an 8 fits me really nicely actually. Um, down the back, if I show you the line drawings, you've got the front here with this gorgeous ruffle and it goes all the way across the shoulder and round to the back, which you can see on the back here. 
Um, it's got bust darts and then bracelet length sleeve, which is a sleeve length that I really like. Um, I can roll my sleeves up if I want to. Um, and then on the back, you've got this gorgeous yoke detail, which you've also got on the front. And then the ruffle is sandwiched between the main part of the fabric and the yoke. And then on the back, you've got this button down back detail. And here, if you can see it, but there's a button at the top and then you've got almost like an opening here before the buttons start again from the ruffle all the way down. Um, really beautiful blouse. I don't know why I haven't made more before. I think actually I probably haven't made more before because the first one I don't wear very often because of that ruffle at the top and the ruffle on the bracelet sleeve. So I do need to dig that out because I absolutely, this has made me fall back in love with the blouse, blouse pattern. As with all of Nina Lee's patterns, um, you always get some really lovely detailed drawings and step-by-step -step instructions that really hold your hand all the way through the process. Um, inserting the ruffle was a really straightforward detail, um, as was inserting the yoke piece on the front and the back too. Um, and again, she just holds your hand all the way through and made it a really enjoyable sew. Um, this is what your back piece looks like before you fasten up the buttons. So you can see you don't have any buttons or buttonholes on this section of your yoke, but you do on this main part of your shirt or blouse. And then you also have one at the top to sort of enclose that. I used some beautiful buttons that I got from Rainbow Fabrics. They gave me a massive bag of these beautiful green buttons. And when I get changed into the next make, I'll show you what the buttons look like on the back. Um, I'm really pleased with this make. It's just the skirt that I'm sort of a bit hesitant about whether it suits me or not. So I'd really welcome your thoughts on that. Um, but that overall was a really enjoyable sew and I'll definitely make some more Bloomsbury blouses. Um, I think I'd quite like, although there isn't the sleeve option for a shorter sleeve, I think I would quite like to try a, a short sleeve. But then I don't know whether that would look a bit odd with the ruffle. Um, I'm going to go and have a look on Instagram at the hashtag to see if anybody else has um, shortened the length of the sleeve. Um, but yeah, thinking about it, I don't know if that short sleeve would go really nicely. I don't know if it would look right with the ruffle. I'm going to go and have a look and see. Let me know if you've made the Bloomsbury blouse and what your thoughts were on it too. Um, in terms of how much fabric you need, it is quite a fabric hungry pattern. I found that because you've got lots of different pieces, the ruffle takes up a huge amount of fabric, um, so do the sleeves, and then you've got the two yoke pattern pieces too. So you do need, um, if it's a narrow fabric, you need um, between 2.1 metres and 2.8 metres, dependent on your size. If it's a wider fabric, between 1.4 metres and 1.9 metres. I just managed to squeeze the um, blouse and the skirt out of two and a half metres of fabric. And I had to cut the ruffle in two pieces. You can't tell at all. There's a seam line there. I don't think you can see that at all. Um, and what I did was I just French seamed it on the underside just to make sure that it was nice and neat. And again, you can't see that really. I think because it's so gathered, you just can't tell that I've had to cut that on. Um, I think you're supposed to cut it on the fold and I had to cut it as two separate pieces and then join it because it's a really long uh, pattern piece. Um, really enjoyable. I'm definitely going to get lots and lots of wear out of the blouse. Maybe the skirt more so when the weather gets a bit warmer. I've got two more things to show you, which are both jumper patterns. So I'm going to get changed into the next jumper pattern to show you. Okay, I have got changed into my penultimate make. Um, these aren't in any order, but this is the, the second to last thing that I'm going to share with you. Um, and this is a pattern that I've sewn up a couple of times. Um, and I'll show you the pattern in a second. Um, I've just got it here to talk in a bit more detail. So one of the reasons I sewed this jumper up, um, apart from wanting to use this beautiful fabric that I've had in my stash for a while, was because the lovely Jess, who is So What If I Sew, and I'll link all her details down below so you can go and follow her if you don't already. Um, she's been raising awareness and money for endometriosis. Um, and she was doing that for the whole month of March and it was amazing. She put so much effort in. There was um, lots of lives where Jess was sharing her knowledge and experience of that and just getting people within the sewing community to start talking about that and adaptations perhaps that they need to make to pattern and the impact that endometriosis does have on our lives. Um, so thank you so much Jess. It was a really inspiring month and it was a wonderful challenge to be part of. 
um, and we were in being encouraged to sew yellow for endo. Um, I don't actually have a huge amount of yellow fabric in my stash, um, but I remembered that I had this beautiful fabric and it's got some yellow hearts in. So I used this fabric and this was my entry into um, the challenge um, to help raise awareness of endometriosis. So I used a pattern by Studio Jetson Patterns and it's the Wow Ladies Jumper. This comes in sizes 6 to 22. Um, it's a dropped shoulder, oh, it's a dropped shoulder pattern and then it's got this amazing ruffle that is sewn into that dropped shoulder detail. I only had, um, I think I had a metre of this fabric and I managed to squeeze out the jumper um, by doing a couple of things. I am a sleeve roller upper. I'm always rolling my sleeves up, even when I'm at work. Um, so one difference that I made to the pattern was I made three quarter length sleeves because I figured I was always going to roll them up anyway. So if I could squeeze out this beautiful jumper out of a metre of fabric by um, chopping off um, a little bit of the, the length of the sleeve um, by making it three quarter when I roll them up anyway, then um, perfect. And then I also shortened the length of the jumper. Now on the pattern, with all patterns, you get a length and shorten line. So I just used the length and shorten line um, to sort of make my pattern piece shorter um, and to make sure that I could fit it onto a metre. And I absolutely love this version. I've worn it loads already. Um, I've worn it just with jeans. I've worn it with a pinafore dress. I've worn it with my culottes. And it's just a really fun, bright, colourful jumper. I love this fabric. This is a fabric by Graziella um, and I'll link them down below. They sell the most amazing fun fabrics and this has just got all these lovely hearts that are all in rainbow colours. Um, I had to play around with the neck piece so it's not narrower but I did, I've only got purple hearts and I couldn't sort of match that along there. So the fabric that I've used is a cotton jersey and it worked absolutely fine for the neckline. I didn't have to worry about using ribbon. Um, for the cuffs, because the jumper that I made, the wow jumper where I used cotton jersey, I made like an orange um, leopard print, um, I'll put a picture in, an orange leopard print wow jumper using cotton jersey and I felt like the cuffs were too narrow. You know, I could just get it on, but it was a little bit tight. And because I knew I was gonna pull this up anyway, I did add a little bit of width to the um, cuff just to make sure that it was comfortable on me. So I'm glad that I did that. Um, I took off a little bit of length from the jumper, like I said, using the length and shorter line. Um, and then I think, no, I didn't make the, and then the hem band was just the, the standard hem band that you get with the pattern. I've still got my Clio skirt on, which is that mint green uh, fabric. So it doesn't actually go with the jumper. So just to say that when I do stand up, it doesn't particularly go very well. Um, but yeah, this is the length of the jumper. I tend to like sort of push the band under slightly so you get a bit of blousiness and it's just a bit more sort of baggy, I guess. I don't tend to have my jumper with the band pulled down. I tend to pull it up and push it under just so you get that sort of blousy effect. It's a really lovely jumper pattern. I absolutely loved sewing it up. I'll go through some of the pattern details in a second. Um, and I'm really pleased that I use this fabric because I've had it in my stash for a while. And I have been a bit nervous to cut into it. I think because it's such a beautiful fabric, I wanted to make sure that whatever I turned it into, I actually ended up wearing loads. And I've worn this jumper so much already. I wore it to work and the children absolutely loved all the rainbow colours. So onto the pattern in a bit more detail. It comes in sizes 6 to 22. So if I just flip to the um, size range for you, so for a size six, it's a 31.5 inch bust, 25.5 inch waist and a 34 inch hip. And then for a 22, it's a 45 inch bust, 40, 41 inch waist and then a 50 inch hip. I made a size eight. Um, normally I go off my bust measurement. There are finished garment measurements included too. So I actually referred to those when I was thinking about what size to make. Um, so I went for a size eight, which is slightly smaller than, my recommend, than the recommended size going off my bust measurement. Um, and the same for my waist measurement. If I went off my bust to my waist, then I should have made a 10, but I went with an eight and it fits me really nicely. So I'm really pleased with that. In terms of fabric recommendations, um, it's been designed for sweatshirting fabric, French cherry, ponty, double knit, interlock fleece, and heavyweight jersey. 
Um, you also, it's also recommended that you use a ribbing for the cuffs and for the neckband if you think that your fabric's not going to have a huge amount of stretch. I've used a cotton jersey twice now and I would just say if you're going to use it for your cuff, just add a little bit of width so you know that it's not going to be too restrictive um, when you use the cotton jersey. Otherwise, I would recommend that you use a ribbing. And for one of my other versions in a pink leopard print um, sweatshirting, I did use ribbing. Um, and it just gives you a little bit more stretch and it's just a little bit more comfortable um, on the cuff and then on the neckband and the band at the bottom if you wanted to. Um, here are some line drawings. One feature that I really love with this pattern, it just gives a really beautiful finish on the inside, is you can add an optional back neck buggy, which is a piece, a pattern piece that looks like this. Um, and it just means on the inside, you can see on this line drawing, you get a little peep of, um, and you can either use a contrast fabric or the same fabric that you've used your jumper. And it just gives a really lovely professional finish on the inside of the jumper. And then you've just got some top stitching on the outside of your jumper too. That's just a really cute, lovely little feature that gives you a really professional finish on your jumper. I didn't have enough fabric for this or the right kind of contrast fabric that I wanted to use. So I didn't include it on this version, but that's what it looks like when you've inserted it. You sort of stitch it on top of the fabric on the inside of your jumper. And it just gives a really beautiful finish on the inside before you insert your neckband. Um, I've already talked about the drop shoulder feature and then it's got this gorgeous ruffle, which I think is just a really cute feature. I've made three wow jumpers so far and I'm definitely going to make plenty more in the future. I think it's just a really cute jumper, um, a little bit loose, which I really like with some really beautiful features like this ruffle. Um, it just elevates a simple jumper into being something a little bit more special. So I'm going to get changed into my final make. Um, so I'll be back in a second. Okay, my final make is a really practical make that I've wanted to um, make for ages. So I got this fabric from Material Girl Laura when she was selling fabric. So her shop closed a while ago now, um, which shows how long this fabric has been sat in my stash. Um, and one of the reasons I'm on a fabric buying ban is because I have got a lot of fabric that I've had for ages, but I've just had the fear of cutting it um, and making it into something. And I think a bit like the um, rainbow fabric that I've got here, I just wanted to make sure that what I turned it into was something that was going to add to my wardrobe and I'd get lots of wear out of it. So I had only a metre of this fabric. I knew I wanted to make a long sleeve jumper, but I wasn't quite sure which jumper to go for. Um, and in the end, I went for the Tilly and the Buttons Billy jumper. This is a pattern that I've made up a couple of times. I've made a few jumper versions, but I've also made a few of the dress version too. Um, it's a pattern that comes in sizes UK 6 to UK 24. Um, and in terms of measurements, for UK 6, it's a bust measurement 30 inches, waist measurement 24 inches, and hip measurement 33 inches. And then for a UK 24, it's a bust measurement 48 inches, waist measurement 42 inches, and hip measurement 51 inches. In terms of fabric suggestions, they recommend sweatshirt fleece, French terry, ponty, double knit, interlock, or sweater knit with at least 10% stretch. You also need a sturdy machine to sew the balloon sleeve version in a thick sweatshirting fabric. Now, I went for a really plain, straightforward version. I played around with the stripes on this pattern, and that was mainly because I tried to eke it out of a metre. I only had a metre of this fabric, um, but I knew I wanted a long sleeve jumper that wasn't too fitted. This is a pattern that is suitable for confident beginners. I would say if you're a beginner, you could tackle this because it's quite straightforward, especially if you go for the, um, the plain sleeved option and not the balloon sleeved option. So you can sew up four different variations for this pattern. Version one is just a regular um, jumper with regular sleeve. Um, and then version two, it's got a balloon sleeve. Version three is a regular sleeve dress and version four is a balloon sleeved dress. So it's great that there are lots of different variations for this pattern. I just went for the plain sleeve. You've got a cuff on the bottom. And again, I went for a contrast, the stripe going a different way to the stripe on the sleeve. And then the same for the neckband. I just put the stripe going a different way. This fabric is a cotton jersey and it's got all these gorgeous little hearts all over it. They're, they're, it's like they've been drawn all over um, and they're really cute. Just a white background with black stripes. You've got, again, I'm wearing it with the Clio skirt that's mint green, so it doesn't necessarily go. 
um, but it's just easier to keep it on. And then I've got the band at the bottom and I've got the stripes going down and on the top I've got the stripes going across. Um, when I was first putting it together I was a bit unsure whether the sleeves looked right with the stripes going across and the stripes going down but actually I quite like the contrast of all the different stripes going in different directions. I think it works really nicely and it is um, a jumper that I've worn quite a few times already. It goes really nicely with my jeans but it also goes with my culottes. Um, some of the skirts that I've got in my wardrobe, my dungarees um, and my pinafore dresses and I've worn this loads already. So again I'm really pleased, like the rainbow jumper, I've got another staple jumper that I'm going to be able to wear lots and lots. Um, really straightforward sew um, and it was quite nice actually just to sew a really simple jumper that didn't have lots of um, fiddly details or you know big balloon sleeves it's quite nice to have a jumper that's just got you know plain sleeves um and I can just throw it on um with a pair of jeans um for whatever I'm getting up to or put it on under um some dungarees or my dungaree dress um, I wore this last week with my ivy pinafore which is in a black corduroy and it was nice just to have a jumper underneath that um had just a little bit of detail with those beautiful hearts um but it wasn't too bright and bold like a lot of my jumpers are so again, I'm really pleased to have another um, staple jumper that I'm going to get loads of wear out in my wardrobe. Uh, before I go, actually, I forgot to show you the button down detail on the Bloomsbury blouse. I just wanted to show you these beautiful buttons that I got from Rainbow Fabrics. From a distance, they look like snaps, but they're actually these gorgeous like vintage um, buttons and they're really beautiful. Um, and that's what the back detail, if I just fasten that top button up for you, uh, that is what the back detail looks like on the Bloomsbury blouse. I just think it's a really pretty feature with those buttons that go all the way down and then you've got that lovely ruffle around the back and then that keyhole opening. So I just wanted to share that with you. I hope you enjoyed seeing what I got sewn up in the month of March. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do hit that subscribe button because I've got loads of videos planned um, and lots of videos coming out over the next couple of months. Um, I hope whatever you're up to, you're safe and well, and I'll be back soon with another video. Take care. Bye.